Oftentimes when we think about improving the sound of your records, this means a large purchase, like a new cartridge or a new set of speakers. Well, the thing is, there are tons and tons of options that are very cheap, little tweaks, little hacks that you can make that will make a world of difference to the sound of your records. So today I want to talk about 10 of my favorite free or cheap ways to get better sounding records. Let's go. My first tip is to play your records with the dust cover up. A few years ago I had a bit of an epiphany. I was like, why are $20,000 record players sold without dust covers, but $200 record players come with a dust cover. And it's not like rich people don't get dust on the records or anything. No, no, no. They can get dust covers made, but they're for strictly when the record player is not in use. And that is exactly what you should be doing if your record player does come with a dust cover. For years and years, I took my dust cover off my record player and didn't even think anything about it. Thing is, the dust cover creates sort of like I don't know, a chamber uh, where different like reflections and different sounds from your speakers can get trapped and kind of amplified and uh, your needle picks up those sounds and overall this gives you more distortion, uh, especially if you're playing at higher volumes, it makes your record sound worse. So just lift your dust cover up and you'll get better sounding records. Uh, the only way I recommend not doing this, if you have a cat that maybe likes to climb up on your records, uh, they can scratch it, the cat might get very dizzy. Uh, in that case, put the dust cover down. My second tip is to move your speaker off of the same surface as your turntable. I see people who have way better equipment than I do make this mistake all the time, and it's such an easy tweak that will improve your sound dramatically. Um, the thing is, your speakers create vibrations with the sound, your needle picks it up, creates a bit of a loop, and if there's no space between your, uh, your speakers and your turntable, it gets worse, it's more pronounced. So the easiest way to have bookshelf speakers, I bought like a $60 set of... Uh, of speaker stands from Best Buy. They were great for me. There's much more expensive options, but I know people who have got like milk crates, they've got chairs, um, they've even just moved their uh, turntable onto a separate surface to have their speakers on a different um, table or whatever it is. Uh, just doing this really, really helps and makes a world of difference. My next recommendation is to look into isolating your components. So this is uh, your amplifier, your turntable, your speakers, anything else you have, finding ways to isolate them. And like I said, I have uh, speaker stands that I have uh, taken my speakers off of the same surface as my turntable, but this is especially important if you can't isolate or get them off of the same surface. Look for options to isolate them. I mean, I've seen people use things around the house like hockey pucks. They'll put hockey pucks underneath their speakers, underneath the four uh, feet of their turntable. This helps to reduce vibrations. I mean, there's tons of other options you can get, even at like the dollar store, little like rubber feet. Um, there's options on Amazon for like 10 bucks, you can get rubber feet to put underneath your speakers. There's options that are uh, screw-in feet or even stuff that uh, you stick on. There's so many options that are super cheap. Every little bit helps and will improve the sound of your record. My next tip is to learn how to properly place your speakers. And this is something I've become completely obsessed with about over the last couple of years after being completely ignorant and completely ignoring it for forever and all the times that I've had records and all the times I've been listening to music through uh, through stereo equipment. Um, I often would just put speakers wherever they made sense in my room. Um, I at one point had one on one shelf, one on a table. I'd have all of my speakers in my turntable, all my components just kind of lumped in where I had the space for it. But it really makes a world of difference to uh, make the time, make the space to find out, find how to get the best sound. And like I said, I've, um, I've bought uh, speakers stands. These allow you the flexibility to kind of move your speakers around. Something is speakers are all engineered differently. Some are designed to be put right up against the wall. Some are designed to be put out a foot or so from the wall. This is the way you can get the best sound. And a lot of it's speaker dependent, a lot of it's room dependent. If you have furniture, stuff on your walls, if you have carpet, hardwood floor, all this stuff makes a difference and learning how to position your speakers will make sure that you get the best sound for your room. The general rule of thumb to keep in mind is to look for an equilateral triangle. If for example, your sweet spot where you typically listen to records is eight feet away from your speakers, make sure your speakers are eight feet away from each other. Uh, make sure that the tweeter, the little tiny speaker that the high uh, frequencies come out of, try to get that around ear uh, height. That's just kind of usually where most speakers are designed. For. If you don't necessarily have the space or you're much closer, try towing in your speakers where you kind of can turn them. Oftentimes this will mean having your right speaker pointing towards your left ear, your left speaker pointing towards your right ear. This can create the uh, sound stage that you're really looking for. And um, my favorite thing to kind of figure this out is to go on YouTube. There's tons of videos that help you to uh, test and place your speakers properly. Um, these are recorded 
recorded in a way that as you move your speakers, you will be able to hear exactly where the person is in uh, the recording. So they'll say like, coming from you from off stage left, from middle left, from center, and this helps you to move your speakers so it doesn't necessarily sound like you have a defined right and left speaker, but one continuous speaker, you can hear things happening outside of the speakers, right in front of you. This is the best way to do it. You will get the best experience possible, especially if you listen to things like old jazz records or old blues records. The sound will knock your socks off once you hear them with properly placed speakers. I don't know how many times I have to drill this one home, but please, 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 Clean your records. It doesn't matter if you're buying filthy used records that you found at a thrift store, if you're buying brand new records directly from a manufacturer, clean your records. I can't tell how many times I've seen people complaining about the sound of a pressing, bad mastering, but the first comment is always, well, did you clean the record? And oftentimes they'll say, well, no, I didn't clean the record. Clean the record, uh, wet clean it preferably. There are unlimited options of how you can clean your records. Some that you might be able to do using things around your house. Some you might need to buy uh, something. Um, the very, very least option I would recommend is maybe getting like a wet brush. Um, these are like 20 to 30 bucks. You can get them at most record stores. Most hi-fi stores will have them. I use the Spin Clean, which is about 100 bucks. But if you really want to get a budget option, Get a spray bottle, some distilled water, like a really high percentage uh, alcohol and like a microfiber cloth. Spray your records down, wipe them down. It's not the best way to clean your records, but it's such an improvement over doing nothing. There's a million videos on YouTube about how to clean records for cheap. Check those out, add that step to your, <laughs> to your record playing. Clean records sound way better than dirty records. Number six, I would recommend to no matter what record you have, no matter what record sleeve it comes with, change to anti-static inner sleeves. So kind of the industry leader in this space for years was Mobile Fidelity with their uh, MoFi inner sleeves. They're like rice paper, kind of these plasticky sleeves with a bit of like a backing to them. Uh, they do a really good job in preserving your records, making sure they don't get scratched, uh, keeping a lot of the static off them as well. Over the last couple of years, a million different duplicate brands have popped up where you can now get, um, the MoFi sleeves in Canada are about a buck a piece. You can now get a duplicate version that are like identical for like oftentimes 25 to 50 cents a unit, where I mean, if you're spending 30 bucks on a record, what kind of an investment is it to add an extra 25 or 50 cents for a new sleeve? I think it's totally worth it, especially if you're cleaning your record. It doesn't really make sense to take it out of a sleeve that could be dirty, clean your record, and then put it back in, and then possibly get that dirt, dust, whatever it is, back on the record. Highly, highly recommended switching all of your sleeves, especially if you're getting records new that have paper sleeves or picture sleeves. Get the anti-static inner sleeves. It's gonna improve the sound of your records. It's gonna improve the longevity of your records, how you store them. But also this is gonna limit clicks, pops, any of that other crap that's caused by uh, having records that uh, are staticky. Next, and I mean, this is something that I know most people do, but there's a lot of people that I hear do not do this. Clean your stylus before every single side of record that you play. I so often hear people say, oh, I clean my stylus once a week, once a month. I clean it before I start listening to records for the day. I don't understand how you can be in a hobby that is so time consuming where you're willing to say, what record do I wanna to listen to? Okay, go to your shelf, grab a record, pull it out of the sleeve, pull it out of the other sleeve, put it on the turntable, grab like maybe like an anti-static brush, run it over a couple times, drop the needle. You aren't willing to spend the extra five seconds to take a stylus brush and go front to back, front to back a couple of times. The stylus is the thing that does the dirty work. It's going through the grooves, it's picking up everything. They can get filthy, they can get stuff stuck onto them. Giving it a wipe down every time you play the record is going to improve the sound so much. Everything that the stylus picks up, you're gonna hear the next time you play a record. Just make sure it sounds better. I think proper stylus hygiene is huge for uh, longevity for records, but also just general listening. It's a bit controversial, and I admit that I was completely skeptical for years and years, but I recommend that you spend some amount of money on speaker cables. Um, for the longest time, I'd heard that audiophiles would spend you know, hundreds or thousands of dollars on cables, and I thought that you know there's no way this makes any difference thing is though my first turntable i got at a value village like 15 years ago i got this panasonic all-in-one with uh, two external speakers on the way home i stopped at walmart i got this spool of this really thin crappy speaker wire for like 10 bucks i used that same speaker wire for years and years and years every time that i moved added a new set of speakers want to you know run speakers into a different room i used that same spool of speaker wire as I started to get more and more into the hobby, I started to learn about cables, 
Still was skeptical, but uh, I'd heard Monster Cables were a decent brand of uh, consumer brand cables. I was at a London drug store in Canada that sells uh, stereo equipment, grocery items, records, pharmaceuticals, any random stuff. But uh, they had this giant spool of Monster Cables and it said it was a dollar per foot. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna take the risk. This isn't you know, spending hundreds of dollars on a new cartridge, hoping that it sounds better than what I have. This is, uh, if it improves my sound, I've spent like 20 bucks. So I got two eight foot chunks of the speaker wire. So yeah, I was in 16 bucks plus tax. Brought it home, hooked it up into my system. It was so shocking how much better this sounded. My system, which at the time I had pretty, uh, I had decent, uh, you know, beginner to like intermediate level equipment. Everything sounded way better. And since then, every time I've done any upgrade, I've always been sure to get uh, speaker cables. The ones I have right now were like maybe 30 bucks on Amazon. Uh, they're 100% copper, uh, oxygen free, and um, they're gold plated. Uh, end caps, just make sure that they work with your system. If you have banana plugs for uh, your receiver, for uh, your speakers, just make sure they work with your system, but highly recommend spending just literally any amount of money versus just using whatever speaker cable you have laying around or what came with your system. Upgrade it slightly, you'll definitely get better sound. So next, I recommend experimenting with external pre-amplifiers. Uh, if you're like me, I've only ever used integrated amplifiers, meaning that the amp or the receivers that I've had for my system, they've had a phono stage built into them. Over the past few years, I've heard so many people, even on like YouTube, who have like $800 to like $1,000 amps with uh, integrated uh, phono stages saying, you know what, I bought like a $50 preamp on Amazon and it sounds just as good or better than what's in my amplifier. And I've been super curious about this. I finally gave in uh, Black Friday. I got this uh, iFi preamp. It was like 90 bucks. I thought, you know, if I don't like it or it doesn't sound better than the amp that I have, um, I have a Marantz integrated amplifier that I always thought was great. But yeah, I got this iFi preamp for 90 bucks and instantly better sounding, more detail, uh, less noise. I can turn it up louder without getting as much distortion. Way better sounding. I mean, there's preamps for like 25 bucks that if you are like me and you've only ever had the integrated amplifier, maybe you've only ever used the built-in preamp on your uh, turntable, look into it. There's tons of people on YouTube who do reviews of these things. It's worth experimenting and trying something different. I mean, it definitely worked for me. It was great for my system. Maybe it's a solution for you too. And my last recommendation, I think this goes hand in hand, especially if you are going to experiment with uh, external preamp, but Amazon interconnects are a total cheat code in hi-fi and in vinyl sound. Whenever I would get a new component or want to add anything to my stereo system, I used to go to like a thrift store and find any random RCA cables, anything to hook up into my system. Sometimes I would just grab stuff, repurpose it from like, I don't know, a VCR or a gaming system, stuff that was not designed for high-end audio. Um, I've, I found out about the Amazon interconnects. They're like 12 bucks for these RCA cables. They're super, super thick, high quality, sound amazing. They're such a steal and they should cost way more, but they just don't. I mean, I don't know how Amazon's making them so cheap. I mean, I probably do, but I don't want to think about it. But uh, yeah, these are just such an incredible option. Like I've swapped out all the RCA cables in my system to be Amazon interconnects. Highly recommended, such a good deal. So great, so high quality, check them out. So that is my list of cheap and free options to get way better sounding records. Do you have anything uh, that you'd like to recommend? I'd love to hear about it as well. Let me know what you think down below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.